Revit Pure presents 16 tips to understand Revit scope boxes. In Revit, scope boxes are used for two reasons. The first is to control the crop region of multiple views. The second is to control the extent and visibility of datum elements such as levels and grids. In this video, you will learn everything you need to create, use and manage scope boxes. Tip number one, scope boxes are created in plan views but are visible everywhere. Scope boxes can only be created in a plan view or in a reflected ceiling plan. If you go to an elevation or to a 3D view, you'll see that you can select the scope box tool. Once the scope box is created in a plan view, it is going to be visible in other views like elevation, as long as the view cut line intersect the scope box. Once they are created, scope boxes can be adjusted in all views categories. Tip number two, scope boxes are used to quickly crop views. Have a look at this office renovation project. The area affected is indicated by the red lines and we want all crop regions to fit the exact same limits. Click on the scope box tool and type a name in the option bar. Then draw the limits of the scope box to fit the intervention zone. Have a look at the instance properties of your plan view. Under extents, you will find the scope box parameter. Assign the scope box you've just created to the plan view. If some annotations element remain in the view, activate the annotation crop tool to get rid of them. Drag the blue dots and the room tags will disappear. Now apply the scope box to all the views that will be using this crop region. To save time, select all the views in the project browser by holding the control key. Again, go to the view instance properties and select the intervention zone scope box. As you can see, all these views now share the exact same crop region. Tip number three, views with the scope box can be uncropped. The moment the scope box is assigned to a view, the crop region is locked and can be modified. To see the whole project in a view, you'll have to duplicate the view and remove the scope box you've assigned. You'll then be able to uncrop the view. Tip number four, rotating scope box also rotates crop region. In addition to controlling the extents of a crop region, a scope box can also be used to control the angle of a view. In the project below, a scope box is created and rotated to fit the angle shape of the building. The crop region is automatically adjusted to fit the angle. Removing the scope box from a view will revert the crop angle back to default. Tip number five, adjust scope box height in the option bar. When creating a scope box, have a look at the option bar. You can give a specific value number to the height of the scope box. This is your only chance to type in a number for the height. Once the scope box is created, you'll have to use the blue arrows to adjust the scope box height. The option bar settings are gone. Tip number six, scope boxes are used to avoid a mess with levels and grids. Managing the visibility and extents of levels and grids in Revit can be a nightmare. Scope boxes are used to control the extents of elements like grids, levels and reference planes. Each of these elements can be assigned to a specific scope box, limiting the 3D extents to the dash green line. In this example, we assign all the grids to a scope box. The 3D extents of all grids are now the exact same. That also includes the bottom and top elevation value of the grid. Levels can also be added to the scope box. Tip number seven, scope boxes affect 3D extents, but not 2D. In Revit, each datum element like a grid contains both 2D and 3D extents. Once a grid is assigned to a scope box, the 3D extents cannot be moved. However, you can drag the blue dots to adjust the 2D extents, which will only affect a single view. To move the 2D extents of a single datum element, click on the lock icon first. Tip number eight, an automatic gap between 2D and 3D extents is created after a scope box is assigned. You learned that 2D extents are not affected by scope boxes. However, when you assign a scope box to datum elements, Revit will automatically create a small gap between the 2D and 3D extents. This helps provide better default visibility. Tip number nine, use propagate extents to share 2D extents. In these two elevations, the grids share the same 3D extents, but not the same 2D extents. To make them consistent, first select all the levels and grids with the right appearance. 
Click on Propagate Extents and check the correct elevation. Click on OK. Both views now share the same 2D extents for all datum elements. Tip number 10. Reset 2D extents to go back to default. If you messed up the 2D extents of an element and want to go back to default, use the right-click menu and click on Reset to 3D extents. You will go back to the default automatic gap as described in tip number 8. The behavior of the tool is different if used on an element without a scope box assigned to it. In this example, we remove the scope box for all levels and grids. When the Reset to 3D Extends tool is used, the 2D Extends will perfectly match the 3D Extends, which in this case perfectly match the dashed green line of the scope box. Tip number 11. Assign scope box to reference planes. In addition to levels and grids, scope boxes can also be assigned to reference planes. When the scope box is assigned, a gap between 2D and 3D extents will be automatically created. Like with levels and grids, you can drag the blue dot to adjust the 2D extents. Reference planes are usually not printed, so don't worry too much about their extents. Tip number 12. Scope boxes are always square. Scope boxes always have a rectangular shape. You cannot modify the limits to have angles. In a project with a slanted walls, that might cause some problems. That means the grids can't match the angle of the building and the crop region assigned to a view will always be rectangular. For the moment, there's no real solution for this issue. Tip number 13. Elements assigned to a scope box can be made invisible in a view. The elements contained in a scope box can be turned invisible in a specific view. Let's say you want to turn off scope box number 1 and all assigned grids in this specific plan view. Select the scope box and click on Views Visible in the Instance Properties. Add an invisible override to the current plan view. As you see, the scope box and the assigned grids become invisible in this specific plan view, but they remain visible in other plan views. In this example, we change the extents of scope box number 1 so it doesn't intersect with scope box number 2. If you go back to the View's Visible menu, you will see that the automatic visibility of the view called Plan Wing 2 is invisible. That's because the view doesn't intersect with scope box 1 and you don't need an override to shut down the scope box and all assigned grids. Tip number 14. By default, scope boxes won't print. There is almost no reason why you would want to see scope boxes once you print to PDF or to paper. In the print settings, the option Hide Scope Boxes is activated by default. Tip number 15. In Revit 2019, assign a scope box to a 3D view. With the new version of Revit, it is now possible to assign a scope box to a 3D view. This will perfectly match the section box to the scope box. Tip number 16. Include a scope box in your Revit template. To save some time when creating a new project, it is often a smart move to include a scope box and assign all default levels and grids in your Revit template. This will help you quickly adjust the extents of datum elements instead of moving them manually. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website revitpure.com. Also, make sure to check out the Rapid Pure Basics package. It contains an ebook, a complete video tutorial series, an exercise project, and a basic Revit template. Basics has been used by thousands of users. People love the simplicity and efficiency of the ebook. It is built with an emphasis on images and can be used by people of any skill level. Download the complete package at revitpure.com/basics.